Alexander says, hello, I purchased 20 Microsoft 365 licenses, but I can't find the admin address I created. I received an email on a personal address, but it's impossible to recover my admin address using the personal address provided to create my Microsoft account. Can someone help? It's, I think, I, well, and Christian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've talked about uh, something similar to this recently. Uh, a um, couple times. Yeah, we were talking about, well, authenticator issues. Yeah. Like yeah, this. yeah. So when you create a Microsoft account, I mean, how I'm not understanding how they could not know what that is because it actually tells you um, what the account is. I mean, it, it when you sign up for a Microsoft account, it's not like it says, oh, this is your account, this is your email for the account, but give us a different email and we'll send everything there. That's not how it works. Um, I, I guess, you know, if they're creating a, and I'm assuming this is an Azure account through Entra, I have to make that assumption. Of course, I'm not looking at the question, but uh, um, he doesn't say anything about uh, it's just a 365 license. That's all he's saying. Um, yeah. If I recall, the last time we had the similar discussion, I believe you uh, um, challenged the person asking the question of whether they were um, trying to do a fraudulent activity that it correct. wasn't really them. You know, right. and I mean, this is a, yeah, I mean, because in this scenario, and I'm, we're not accusing Alexander. No, of this, no, 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 no. It's a lot easier to get a hold of someone's personal email address and access to that account than it is the corporate account where this information was sent that should be secured. That's correct. So the person, it, I mean, even let's take this scenario a different way. A person signs not up. Not accusing them of fraud. Is that what you're saying? Don't no. accuse them of that. Okay. No. no, 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 no. That was Christian talking, not me. Christian I was, I was channeling Mike from B -U -C -K -L -E -Y. last. B u c k l e y. Okay. Now, um, take it this a, a different way. What if you had an administrator that had purchased these licenses ahead of time, right? They when they were employed. Maybe they're no longer employed. And they can't have access to that address because they're no longer employed. Okay, so they want to use their personal address, but they can't do that, right? Because they don't own the licenses. It very well could be that someone is just trying to get the licenses from where they used to be employed or where they used to get that, that email. Because if you are an admin, and especially if you're an admin of 365, you can add an alias to an account. So if you need to, you, and you don't have access to that, you should be able to access that other account or, you know, request access to that other account, send as, you know, uh, type of scenario, and be able to, you know, get whatever email you need to get in order to get access to those licenses. But if it's not the case that you have that access any longer, because maybe you're not employed anymore by that company, um, then no. You you have no recourse there uh, to get the admin e uh, email address or add you know to access through the email address. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think if and I don't know if anybody else has run into this ex experience, but I mean it's I mean your only uh, only other recourse that this is a legit thing. You're not trying to do something for a former employer or fraudulently mm -hmm. as me, you know, channeling Mike stated earlier. Um, the uh, no, but I uh, is would be to contact you know Azure support and uh, go through that or go uh, contact Microsoft and uh, um mm -hmm. and, and kind of work that way. But um, again, they're going to question oh, that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we've, I, mean, I, been, I don't know what that process is like, but that's going to be lengthy. Well, oh, I've been through that. I, I've actually been through that process twice, and I'll tell you, it's not it's not a pleasant process because, you know, they even got down to the point where they wanted someone a copy of someone's you know birth certificate. Um, they wanted, you know, when they started talking about someone who had passed away and they needed access to their account and things like that, and the administrator was no longer around, so on and so forth. But then they get down to, you know, we need something on company letterhead. We need signed by an, uh, you know, someone, an officer of the company, and with yeah, right. And then they yeah. they actually contact that authorized person, yeah. um, you know, and lay lay the liability on them if if they yeah. do that. But they they don't. I mean. They don't mess around with that stuff anymore. It's not like they just say, oh, yeah, this person, you know, they need this. We're just going to give it to them. 
they, they, they can't with they with can. the level of security that they have to have around these systems globally the, the various standards and this we've not even talked about the region that they're in you know at, you know that making this request um a yeah. lot a lot of rules no they you're right they they can't afford to mess around with this stuff no and i'll tell you i just went through this yesterday morning as i was going through because um we got you know our our, our mvp status got re-upped right we just got the renewals and for some reason, you know, they assign the, you know, some things for the MVP to another email address of mine, which, you know, instead of the one it was supposed to be, you know, go figure that they, they would do something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, I had to go through and I had to make sure I went through every one of my Microsoft accounts and I made sure that I could access these accounts if I ever needed to. So. Did you know that they literally have like a dozen different ways to get recovery of an account? I mean, they, you can put as, you know, you can put up to like five or uh, four or five authenticator app entries in there. You can put alternate emails, you can put alternate phone numbers, you know, you can do all this stuff. I mean, no one should be losing access to a Microsoft account uh, yeah. if you go through, you know, and, and do your due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I I don't know anything else to say around this. Again, I go back to the rest of what we talked about here. I said, I said like Alexander, really, like you need to start the process. Contact Microsoft support for that if if this is all legit. I will yeah. say it was a bit of a struggle when I got my new phone recently, of uh, making sure all of those accounts in the Authenticator app. Oh, that's a terrible thing. Properly. That's that's, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's have you ever switched from have you ever have you ever switched from one uh, OS to another like from I, iPhone oh, yeah. to Android or Android no. to iPhone? That's a no, nightmare that's with the authenticator. The authenticator mm -hmm. does not like that. But yeah. if I, I mean, hadn't had my old phone to be able to right. go back to, Correct. that was exactly. the thing. And that's that, when, oh, you, yeah. when you were talking exactly. that same, like, that's what I was thinking of is maybe this person is experiencing, because I've heard a few other people say that recently, we're like, what do I do? I don't have that old phone anymore. It's been wiped. Now, what do I do right. to get that set up properly on the new phone? We, we literally just stated that in the last uh, we, in exactly. the last batch of the recordings. We said the exact same thing, and it's why it's like never go into like Verizon and give of your other phone and like. It, oh, I did that recently, phone, and it was the like, worst thing ever. Mm. Like the and the trade in value is never worth it anyway. Oh hell no! Um, Pardon you me. Could, you could sell your phone for much more than the trade in yeah. value. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just just don't do it. Uh, it's like leasing a car. Sorry to insult anybody's leasing, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that old phone's worth its weight in gold yeah. when you are setting up the new phone. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, and, and I see I see so many of those in the news groups. It's it's like the same thing. I I don't have that old phone. I can't get the authenticating code anymore. And it's like, well, why in heaven's name do you only have just the old phone? You know, there's a dozen different things you've got to have at, at the so, same time. And so you're I've, far better off keeping the old phone. Mm. Than to, I've oh, taken now, I've got, a, I've got a OneNote and it's a lock OneNote and I'm taking screenshots and writing, putting oh, all those codes and everything. Now they all go in because I've had that exact scenario just recently mm -hmm. and I just went, I can't afford to have that happen again. I have to deal with too many clients and I can't get in or they're an old and they come back after seven months and they haven't turned me off because they wanted to do further work. And then all of a sudden I've got a new phone, all sorts of things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The hard way. Thank you.